I wonder how many puns I can do on this whole curve displays thing. Here we have two phones that are trying to go against the curve. In this quick look, we have phones that try to bend the rules. LG is flexing its muscle to create a smartphone that is pretty unique. Maybe Samsung is trying to make a phone that is all around a good device. If you put the LG G Flex on top of the Galaxy Round, does it make a perfect circle? It's Josh Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And today we're taking a look at this curved display trend in a comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Round and the LG G Flex. Now, if there's one thing we have to talk about before we even get to the curves themselves, it's the sizes of these two phones. Uh, something that you may not notice right off the bat or may not have really been put out there is the fact that the LG G Flex is quite simply larger than the Galaxy Round. That might sway you a little bit because if you're not used to very large displays or handling them for that matter, the LG G Flex might be a little bit steeper in its learning curve. But then that's where the curves actually come into play. Now, like I said, in the LG G Flex unboxing and first impressions, I began to sort of realize how these curves are supposed to make sense. Now in the Galaxy Round to begin with, what I did notice is that the distance that you have to reach to the other side of the screen in order to sort of perform tasks has been minimalized at least a little bit. It's a very subtle change. The fact that the curve comes upward and you are able to get to it a little bit easier makes this also a pretty accessible phone to use. It's actually pretty nice. However, on the LG G Flex, the curve also does the same thing, except since the curve goes from top to bottom, it allows you to get to the top of the phone a little bit easier. And on top of all of that, you do have this curve that allows the phone to lean towards where your hand is trying to reach. And that also allows for the notification drop down to be, to, to be a little bit easier to reach as well. So overall, these curves do allow for a little bit easier handling. Now that brings us to the displays on these two phones. Now the reason why this is a pretty important aspect is because you have a different resolution for both. The Samsung Galaxy Round does take on the pretty similar display of the Galaxy Note 3 in that it has a 1080p display. Now we know that Samsung is good with their AMOLED displays and it could be your favorite or not. However, what's important here is that the LG G Flex does not come with a 1080p display. It is 720p. And for that matter, you do see a little bit of that curve when you're using those displays, which is actually really, really cool. Especially on the LG G Flex, when you're scrolling up and down, let's say on a website, you do get that sense that it's actually coming around like this. It's actually bending to the curve, the actual elements on the screen. And that's really, really nice on that plastic OLED. In the case of the Samsung Galaxy Round, it's not really the same thing. Despite having that left to right curve, you don't get the sense that it's actually moving across that curve. However, I will say that Samsung did put some transitions inside of the UI, especially in the home screens, where the elements actually push back a little and then move over, so it does provide a little bit of that illusion. Now, that's another aspect on these that might sway you one way or the other. If you really want your high resolution screens, then you might have to go with the Galaxy Round. However, the LG G Flex is still no slouch. Just because it's 720p doesn't mean you won't have a lot of fun watching anything on this screen. And then finally, the software. For the most part, you're getting very familiar versions of TouchWiz and then the Optimus UI here on the LG G Flex. And of course, TouchWiz is pretty much the same type of UI that we've known for years now. However, in terms of the functionality of the software in the Samsung Galaxy Round, it does take advantage of the curve a little bit, like I was saying before. Now, whether or not those particular functions will be useful to you is really kind of up to you. Personally, if you are able to tilt the phone a little bit in order to look at your notifications, that's cool. However, it does have a bit of a delay. You might have a better time just doing the air gesture that allows you to just wave your hand over the phone and then you'll get your notifications that way. In terms of its functionality, the G Flex focuses on being a sturdy and durable phone and that Flex allows it to sort of do that. So it really comes down to hardware versus software in this particular sense because in terms of software, you kind of get what you expect when it comes to the LG G Flex. As far as we can tell, there really aren't that many functions inside of the software that take advantage of that curve. So that begs the question of whether or not this is just a big phone with a curve for the sake of a 
a curve? Well, LG made sure that the curve made sense. And the reason why is because, well, it is called the flex, so the phone is actually able to bend. Uh, it, it does take a lot of force in order to make the curve become flat, but that's the point of the phone, is that you are able to flatten the device if, uh, if it so happens that a, a sort of, some sort of force makes it. While on the Galaxy Run you get a couple new features, um, it really is up to you whether or not those are important and will make you want it more than the sturdy or durable phone that LG has attempted to make.